Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com with this week's episode of the Market Monday. So Standard is still up in the air. We just had some bans uh, with Emrakul with the Smuggler's Copter and Reflector Mage. And we have all this hype about the Crazy Cat Lady combo and hype about many other like degenerate combos in Standard. We have the decks on MTGO. Let's just look at those really quickly before I get into the topic of uh, what I want to talk about today. But it seems like that people are just sticking to things that are familiar with the ban list. A lot of green-red energies, a lot of white-green tokens, a lot of these these ones here, these these uh, teamer flash decks with the basically the Elder Deep Fiend, and we have a lot of still the Dynavolt Towers or Torrential Gear Hulk control type strategies. That's what seems to be that how the metagame is settled now that there is on MTGO is kind of a weird place. It has the bannings are current. But we, of course, don't have access to A3 Volt yet. So that is, it's it's still really Gideon or Torrential Gear Hulk or Aetherx Marvel or Energy or uh, I would say the Elder Deep Fiend. So you have five different strategies. Aggro is nowhere to be found at the moment. It just really can't push through. Besides the green-red energy strategies, no one has really picked up the, the aggro. So what I, I don't want to really talk about A3 Volt speculation there because it's way too volatile for my blood. So I would say just stay away from standard for the next couple of weeks until the Pro Tour hype starts getting built up and you can start seeing a lot of decks that are being played around with. I think investing in what will be the Tier 1 out of the gate stack is a mistake. I think if you go back in previous um sets after they were released the tier one deck on week one and week two usually ends up being one of the worst decks of the pro tour so i think day two of the pro tour is where you really want to look at standard we'll keep an eye on it but this week i do definitely want to talk about modern and modern is is one of those more volatile um formats at the moment it does seem like it has slightly gone up in the past few weeks just the overall price of the modern, like the staples in modern, we'll, we'll take a look at that here if I can figure out how to get there again. So this is kind of weird using Goldfish's data because they do these kind of like re, they, it all depends, like the price depends on what cars are included in this uh, modern staples. So right now there's 103 cards. So that's why you see these like dips every now and again is when they readjust and some come in, some go out. So it does seem since they've done their last readjustment though, that modern has had this trajectory upwards. And I don't know if there was something here, if they added more cards that affected it. But as you can see the last one they did, there was still the trajectory downward and now there's been a trajectory upward. So that's good news for modern. However, I don't think that this trend can continue for much longer because we are the release of Modern Masters 2017 is very, very soon in March. And that is going to hit a bunch of cards, especially the cards from Innistrad and Return to Ravnica. I think Return to Ravnica will get hit twice as hard just because Return to Ravnica boxes are still super cheap. You can still find them for like $70 uh, through different distrib distributors slash eBay slash other just outlets. And there isn't a lot of cards out of the Return to Ravnica block that are really worth anything. And some of those are casual cards and I don't think that they'll be reprinted in Modern Masters 2017. However, Modern Masters does seem to hit a few casual cards every time they print the Modern Masters uh, sets. So a few of those will be Mythics, a few of those will be Garbage Mythics, we will question why, looking at you, Comet Storm. But I think that there are some pretty safe targets that I can say are going to be included in the set. And that is why I think we should, if you have any of these cards, you should unload them. And just in general, I would say any even slightly playable card in both Return to Ravnica and Innistrad blocks, you should dump right now. There just will not be enough time between now the end of january through february before march is released and yes not all of them will be reprinted which could lead to some spikes in the cards that miss the reprint but i think the majority of them will be and it's just it's just a better approach to be safe than sorry by getting out of these cards so the first one definitely will be liliana the veil liliana the veil has had a trajectory that's been every like it's been pretty volatile to begin with uh because it has like these gp it had a, a ptq it was the PTQ qualifier promo. And so that stabilized the price for a bit. And you can see it's been going down since it's $115 uh, height. And then has been going up and down a little bit here and there. 
This card, I think, is absolutely going to be reprinted at the Mythic level. I actually think they won't print reprint Tarmogoyf. I think Liliana is, is enough to sell the set for the Modern Masters. And so Tarmogoyf could see a little bit of a spike. But if Tarmogoyf does get reprinted, I expect its value to half. I think this will be the straw that breaks the camel's back for Tarmogoyf. And this will also be the set that, that will, I think will affect Liliana. Uh, by at least about 20-25% if it gets reprinted as a mythic. So you can see on some of these, like the Tarmogoyf reprinting, you can see that it started out the gates um, after it got reprinted. This is actually, let's see if we can see Modern Masters 2. So it got all the way up to, before the Modern Masters 2 reprinting right here, it was up to $200. And the Modern Masters 2 reprinting hit Tarmogoyf to a, a, the, the tone of $75. It is still going down. I've been seeing Tarmogoyf on eBay for $100 for months now, $100, $110. And I think that we can expect sort of the same cut with Liliana. Now, Tarmogoyf has been reprinted. I think if you combined all of the printings of, of Tarmogoyf, it's actually been printed more than Liliana. However, Tarmogoyf is a lot more versatile as far as it sees more play in, in a variety of different decks in modern. It's basically your go-to two-drop. There's There are particular decks that have traditionally splashed just for the Tarmogoyf, and it, it I've seen Burn use it before, and I've also seen Zoo and Death Shadow Zoo put the Tarmogoyf in rather than other targets. And then, of course, it's the staple in Abzan and Jund, and even in the the kind of the, the, the Black Green Rock variants. And I think that Soltai, with the printing of Fatal Push is actually going to be very relevant in the, the modern format. So keep your eye on Tarmogoyf. I think it's too volatile to invest in Tarmogoyf. I could see Wizards just throwing this again in Modern Masters 2017. I think going forward it'd be a better uh, policy for the modern sets. I said when Modern Masters 2 came out they should have done 2 and one two, so, so a booster box of Modern Masters 2015 should have contained the... Uh, they should made it, maybe made, should have made it 36 packs and then done 24 and 12 of, or in this case, since they wanted it 24 packs, they should have just done like 18 and 6 or something like that. So you would have drafted the two, two and one, two of the new Modern Masters and one of the old. I guess that could get messy for the draft format, and they'd have to kind of balance it with old draft strategies. But it would allow like Modern Masters 1 cards, which had a low printing, to be put back into the system and not have to reprint them as much into Modern Masters uh, two and then the same thing in Modern Masters three. We can see just a split of each because the further along we go on the timeline of of, of modern, the cheaper the cards are going to get. Innistrad is the last set. That is the last block before the the policy before the huge influx of players into Magic and Return to Ravnica boxes. I bet there's probably like four Return to Ravnica boxes or even more than that in existence for every Innistrad box. It's just that that was the huge, huge influx of Magic players during that time period. And then after the Return to Ravnica, when you get into Theros and into um, the Constant Arkir blocks, there even exists way more supply. So I think it's 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 going to be weird for Modern Master sets to continue to pick up these newer sets going forward as they're just not going to be very relevant. And we can see that really with Return to Ravnica. The prices of Return to Ravnica are very, very low. Uh, the uh, let's just I think and I think Return to Ravnica actually has a better estimated value than than the other sets in the block. So you can see it's all just the lands, the shock lands that hold really any value. There's no mythic until about Sphinx's Revelation that only holds a, a, a below a five dollar price tag, and that card has just still been trajecting down for the longest time. So I mean this is during the standard print, and there just hasn't but been enough demand. Uh, boom, all the way down. And you can see that with many, many of these cards. A lot of people invested in the Shocklands after rotation, thinking that they'd recover. And some of them did. Like the Steam Vents did recover after it rotated out. But you can see there's been a huge decrease in the value of, of Shocklands since about Eternal Masters. And that's very, very puzzling. I'm actually surprised to see the Steam Vents is down, uh, down to the $10 mark. Uh, and that's that's bad news for staple-based cards because even those are these are usually like a one of in the decks that run three colors. Sometimes there are two of. Uh, they're still a, what we consider a huge staple 
in modern. They've really, really flattened out. I think this was all speculation hype up to here. And now vendors just haven't been able to sell them in the rates that they'd wanted. I mean, they wanted this big payout. They invested in it like $10 and wanted it to sell them out at like 20 And it never happened. And I think they cut their losses at 15 and started putting these back into the system. And now you see that they're way low. Or this could just be an anticipation thinking that they will be reprinted in Modern Masters 2017. I highly highly doubt that they will get a reprinting because I think that lands are very awkward to print in Modern Masters sets. So I think that these shock lands are actually safe investments to a point. I think we still need more fetch lands. Of, we need the the, uh, the Zendikar fetch lands to be reprinted before I think the shock lands actually begin to uh, gain value or momentum in the modern format. So let's just go back to Return to Ravnica. Return to Ravnica has a few cards that are going to get reprinted. The first one being Abrupt Decay. I think that this is the only one that they can really target this in the Modern Masters format. Chromantic Lantern just did get a reprint in the Commander sets. So Abrupt Decay is, is poised to be reprinted. I think you should get out of them. That will, that will definitely half the value of Abrupt Decays. And I think that they'll come out the gates of Modern Master 2017 around $4.00. And they will, I think, be able to recover quite well because Abzan and I think that Abzan and Soltai are going to be a lot more played in modern with the printing of Fatal Push. I think that it, you're going to kind of split. Everyone's going to have their flavor of black green that they can play, whether it be white, red, or blue. All of them are going to be viable in, in modern, and Abrupt Decay is going to be a very, very good uh, card in that format. It's also really good in Legacy. And it's been a staple there for a, ever since it's printing. One of the best cards that has been printed since Ravnica forward as far as eternal playability. So I'd, I think that they won't miss the Abrupt Decay in the reprint. The other one I think that they absolutely will reprint is Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace I think you should probably be unloading anyways right now because of the dominance of Dredge is going to, the nerf of, from the, the, the Golgari Grave Troll to the Golgari Thug I think is going to affect Jun more than um, a lot of uh, uh, more than what people expect. So let me actually pull this up a little bit bigger for people to see here. So anyways, I think that Cyclonic Rift could actually also see a reprint in the Modern Masters 2017 because it's one of those cards that does kind of transcend the, the casual and competitive. You see it every now and again in Modern in various different decks. I mean, it's a very, very powerful card in like Blue Tron as at least a sideboard piece because seven mana is nothing for some of these decks to get out. And it's it's also a nice little early card that can bounce back a permanent, an online permanent for just two mana. So Boomerang on the low end, but the overload is just huge. Uh, once you get up to seven mana. So I think that both of these will be reprinted, uh, the Rest in Peace and the Cyclonic Rift. And I think the Supreme Verdict is going to be the other one that does get reprinted in the Modern Masters 2017. Other than that, the rest of the cards are pretty low anyways. So, I mean, if you invest in these cards, they've had pretty terrible uh, gains in the past. Tristani was one that I was all in on for quite a while, but you can just see just how much was printed in it to the... Ravnica format that a, a very very popular commander card has only been able to have meager gains for the past two almost three years since the the rotation occurred so just shows you the, the kind of the slow gaining of of magic since return to Ravnica and just really how much of this product exists out there in the market so Innistrad's a little bit different the Innistrad block Innistrad block is going to have a lot less out there and it, it's probably going to get hit harder, though, than the Return to Ravnica. A lot of those prices can easily get halved. I think that the potential of Innistrad going down in value is even higher. So the Innistrad targets that I really think are going to be reprinted are, first of all, going to be Lily on the Veil. Therefore, they don't need to reprint what I think is, is being Tarmogoyf. And I also don't think they need to reprint Noble Hierarch, even, even though I hope that they do, because this is probably the most popular card in the modern format. It just goes in so many, a variety of different decks and is needed usually as either three of or a four of in those particular decks. Uh, so Caverns of Souls, I think, is going to be reprinted. It wasn't reprinted in any sort of uh, commander base set, which I thought could have easily been thrown into a commander deck. It also was not reprinted in like Eternal Masters because it does see a lot of legacy play in various decks that uh, utilize this uncounterable effect. I believe Eldrazi does in Legacy. Uh, but Caverns of Souls is a very, very popular 
a uh, casual card is very as well as a very very popular competitive card and also has that price that they're definitely looking for in modern to sell their sets so i think caverns of souls is going to get a reprint it could actually be a rare i think they might bump this up to a mythic but i could i, I could see this being kind of the chase rare out of the set the other card that will be maybe bumped up to a mythic but i could easily still see i actually think the snapcaster mage will be bumped up to a mythic so it's going to effectively stabilize the price I, a mythic out of uh, modern masters can easily stay at around forty dollars just because of how expensive the packs are and a standard set mythics tend to level out about twenty dollars just due to you know supply and how much the boxes cost well a set that costs twice as much with a lower supply i think forty dollars is a good um a good lie uh, a good rate for for heavy played mythics in uh, the, the Modern Master sets. And I think a good example of that is Mox Opal. I think it's probably very comparison to how much these see play. Mox Opal and Snapcaster Mage. Of course, Snapcaster Mage is a little more versatile than Mox Opal, but Mox Opal has been in a, a, a very consistent Tier 1 deck uh, that is actually very, very popular to play. And it also can't crack that $40 price tag. So I think that's probably about right for Snapcaster Mage. I think Dark Confident might be the other one that we can look at, a rare that was turned up to a Mythic. Yeah, and that's around the $37 mark. So that's probably a good, uh, a good uh, baseline for the Snapcaster Mage. So another, let's go down the list of, of other cards in the format or in the, in the Innistrad blocks that will most likely get a reprint. There was the uh, Stony Silence. Stony Silence, I think, is around $8. Uh, Gaffdigger's Cage. I think Gaffdigger's Cage and Stony Silence will get a reprint. They One of them affects Affinity, so it's a, a good Affinity sideboard. One affects these decks that try to use the Graveyard, and the, the Cage has just gone up like crazy. I think Cage, if you haven't got out of Cage, you should have got out of Cage a long time ago, as this was a card that was really good against the... Um, it's good against car decks like Dredge, but misses. I believe it misses on on Living End because it goes through the Exile Zone first and then comes into play. Yeah, I believe that's so. So Grafdigger's Cage is not like as versatile as, as cards like Rest in Peace for every graveyard-based strategy. It was super good against Dredge because it, it really messed up with either Graveyard or Top of the Library, which is is what the Dredge. Dredge, basically everything came back from the Graveyard. And so the cage was just a first turn play that you could shut down Dredge until they could deal with it, which get, bought you some time. So cage is something you should definitely get out of. It might be too late. It's just going to continue to spiral downwards. And I do think that I mean, it's too late for them to adjust and not include this in Modern Masters 2017 if they were planning on it. And I think this, of course, will be another card that needed a reprint that is from these, these sets. Again, the focal point is going to be these two sets, Return to Ravnica block and Innistrad block. And that's just too much of a duh card to not be included. Of course, Stony Silence is in this list, and a few other ones that are a little bit lower on the end of cards are, yeah, not really many more from Innistrad. There, there are a few cards that, that I think could get printed out of the Innistrad block, uh, even cards like Gravecrawler, if there's a deck that, or, or a, a grave-based strategy. I mean, that was kind of the focal point. Sometimes they like to take the focal point themes of the two sets and graveyard recursion or zombies was a huge focal point for the Innistrad block. There is also a miracle based strategy for Avacyn Restored, but I don't think that there's enough to really, miracles is more of a legacy thing. I think if they're going to put it anywhere, it'd be in an eternal masters type, uh, reprint rather than in a, in a modern type reprint. So I think the overwhelming thing theme out of Innistrad is going to be, uh, the graveyard. And it, the flip cards, too, are going to be very hard. So I, I, I highly doubt a lot of the flip card uh, mechanics are going to be reprinted in the Modern Masters 2017. As far as the Ravnica is concerned, I bet they're just going to go for the best good stuff type type cards. So maybe you'll get one or two printings out of each, each guild. And then the rest of them will just try to be cards that can uh, transcend those type of guild. Because it'd be very, very tough to print a ton of multicolored cards in a, a Modern Masters type set. It's just there's too many things they need to reprint. So beyond those cards, I think that cards, I think this is finally going to be the time that you see Damnation reprinted. If Damnation does get reprinted, this will more than half its value because the only thing that's really keeping this card at as expensive as it is is because it, it was in a set 
that is very, very low. Someone, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this was the time period of magic when it was at its lowest, when it was trying to recover and was, was definitely on a stagnant time period as far as competitive play is concerned. So I might be wrong here if it is the lowest or maybe that was Kamigawa. I know that somewhere in the modern time period was really a downer for the, the magic, uh, especially competitive play. So not a lot of these damnations out there it's never had another reprint and this could just be the reprint that really really affects the price of damnation another card that i think will get reprinted is blood moon uh blood moon is is kind of awkward because a lot of people are calling for this card to be banned uh but it doesn't seem i think it, it's a necessary evil in the modern format you never know people that might end up listening to wizards and it just acts these like really really heavy hate cards such as blood moon uh, but for now, I think it does need a reprint. I think that Modern Masters 1 did see the reprint. So I think in Modern Masters 3, this is also going to be a money chase card that they're going to print and just make sure that there's enough of these in the uh, format for people to build, build these other fringe decks like Blue Moon and Scred. And a lot of sideboards actually run the Blood Moon. One of the problems with in sideboards is sideboards are almost as, as, uh, as far as the feel of investing, if you talk to players, there's two things that a lot of players hate spending money on. A is the land base and B is sideboard cards. So I think that research has shown wizards that people don't mind spending a lot of money on like chase cards, like spending a lot of money on a Snapcaster Mage because they they, they feel good about that card. It's a card they they play a lot. It does a huge effect. It, you know, it's, it's something why the whole reason why we like to play magic is those specific cards. Cards like the Fetchlands and Blood Moon and all these Grafticker's Cages where they just come in in a sideboard match, those are something you hate to invest in because it just feels, it doesn't feel the same. Uh, it, let me know in the comment section if that's how you feel, but that's what I, as a store owner and as just a competitive player, I overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly hear that from other players. They hate hate investing and there's another one engineered explosives i actually do think this will be another one except that sunburst is quite awkward i could see sunburst there's one thing that we could easily see with sunburst with if they do focus on the ravnica guilds then sunburst actually does become a mechanic that could easily go in this uh, in the modern masters 2017 remember they want a sealed in a draft feel and multicolored could be a focal point so therefore i think engineered explosives is pretty bad as far as holding on to or investing at this point so i i'm still under just the whole uh, my opinion basically is just to sell everything i think that modern is just way there's just too many cards that could get hit in the modern reprint like another one like goblin guide it missed a reprint i think that one of the reasons why they didn't reprint it last time around is it was on the watch list uh, of cards of being too powerful, but I think with Burn uh, and Zoo, well, Zoo getting hit, and Burn hasn't really been good for a while now, I think it's safe to redo uh, reprint Goblin Guide and take it off the watch list. Um, a few other cards that I don't think are going to be reprinted, I don't think Infect will be in this Modern Masters, so you could easily, you know, sink some money in Infect, or, but the whole problem with Infect is it did get hurt from the recent bannings. Uh, cards like Spell Scott, I think, are going to get a, I don't know, because Rexy Man is very awkward as well to be put into a set. So this is just a very awkward, it's too volatile for my blood, and so with my advice, is there's just not enough time for investments or just not enough information out there to really pull the trigger on any specific investments for modern. With the recent bandings, we don't even know what the metagame is like. I know that Tron and Scape Shift got a lot better because their two matchups that were they were horrendous against got uh, nerfed. But both Infect or both uh, Scape Shift and the Tron could definitely have some significant reprints. We could see Tron Lands, for example, in Modern Masters 2017. We could see another Worm Coil Engine reprint or another uh, Karn Liberated reprint or just another Scape Shift and Valor Kit reprint that just will kill your investment right there with those particular cards. So it's just way too volatile. I think that if I were to make the calls here, I would say just get out of Modern. I think that with the Frontier gaining steam with Modern very, very expensive and people looking for other outlets to play. And with the looming reprints of Modern Masters 2017, way too volatile for my blood. So let me know what you think in the comments section below if there are specific targets that you think will go up. Uh, I mean, I think this card right here just shows you the overall health of Modern. 
since it went out of standard, people invested into it actually. And then after it completely rotated, I know there's a lot of hype of buying into Thoughtseize because it's just one of these cards that is going to, to define a format for so long. And Thoughtseize has continued to go down. Down, 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 down. It's now around $11 for the Thoughtseize. And I just think the, the Modern Masters 2017 is not going to be enough to bring new blood into the modern format. And, and historically, with the releasings of modern sets, there have been an influx of players into the format. However, without a Pro Tour, without a PTQ season, uh, I don't think that modern is, is going to have any huge price gains. I could be wrong, but we'll keep an eye on modern. But again, my advice is just to get out of it. Get out of modern and re-diversify it into other things. I still think casual cards are good. There's still a lot of spec targets as in the form of the Commander 27 or the Commander 2016 uh, commanders that were released. There's there's still some some yeah. I, I have to revisit that. The whole problem with that is Wizards kind of cut off the pipeline for. Uh, more of these entering the market. And so there's less decks, especially like Attraxa decks even being purchased. Therefore, there'll be less of these particular cards that will be going into just every Attraxa deck that gets opened and played. So anyways, I think that Modern will see actually a good, uh, healthy, not just Modern, but Magic the Gathering in 2017. Uh, I think that with the shaking up of New Blood and that maybe this new team will listen to the community a little bit more, I, that's what I'm crossing my fingers. I've got a few emails from people telling me they're completely selling out. I had a, a, a good email by a gentleman saying that his scene is completely uh, died in the Los Angeles area, where in fact that there used to be very aggressive buy lists in the Los Angeles scene, where some of the, the, the bigger shops have completely uh, taken off Modern and Legacy from their buy list. And with Standard being stagnant, that Standard has been off their buy list anyways, because it's just been so stagnant with just a few decks. They were in a kind of for a rough year as far as competitive uh, speculation on uh, magic cards so anywho again i would just continue to to i wouldn't panic i don't think that the magic is going to die anytime soon in fact i think it's still going to have a steady growth we're just not seeing these huge huge influx of players and i don't know i think that we're going to be setting up for a 2018 to have a huge boom in magic the gathering if they start adding all the things that they want to implement if they really start branding the game and if we see like a crash in pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, and i think that pokemon right now is booming and usually what happens when pokemon booms is all those players that are getting into it now it's just not an in-depth game there's just very the, the game has a learning curve that is not nearly as high there's just not as much as you can do and people get frustrated they love card games they get into card games they get introduced by these hearthstone pokemon type games and then they hear about magic, they give it a go. And for the most part, with the people that I hear that have they've come from old games, like even like the when World of Warcraft had a C, uh, collectible card game, is is they really do enjoy magic. There's just a whole different depth to magic. So I would I would stay stay strong in the Magic the Gathering community. I, I think that we're we might be in for a, a a pretty crappy, a pretty crummy 2017, but 2018 will probably be the recovery year for Magic the Gathering. Anyway, we'll keep an eye out for spoilers for the Modern Masters 2017. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.